Okay, it's funny time that we talk about materials. And as with the light sessions and rendering sessions, we'll first cover a little bit of some theory and then we go into Cinema 4D and have a look at the Corona materials. Before we head off and discuss how surfaces behave of materials, just a quick note on the general importance of materials. So the quality of your materials plays actually quite a big role in the overall appearance and overall quality of your image. Uh, so you can have excellent lighting, perfect render settings, but still with bad materials, you will get bad results. So it's good to have really a focus on good and realistic looking materials. And then if we understand how materials react to light, we can kind of tweak them to be realistic looking and uh, take into account different kind of important settings and things when we set up our materials. The good thing is when it comes to materials, it's actually quite easy to, to understand. It's pretty straightforward and there are not too many things to take into account when it comes to creating realistic looking materials. Just if you have a look here on this kind of interior rendering, um, for example, you can have a look at the floor and you can see just here in the right area, you can see the details of the wood wooden floor and how it reacts differently to light and how the re reflection of light behaves a little, a little bit differently in different areas. And well, also maybe if you have a look at the lamp over here, the gentle gaze, you can see that the class behaves in a certain way. And yeah, well, they're overall, if you have a really close look under the materials, you see there are always some kind of irregular irregularities going on. So this is where we have to get a little bit into the theory of, of materials. So to understand what kind of settings we can adjust and what or how materials behave in the real world. The first main thing to understand is the difference between a glossy reflection and a diffuse reflection. We also say specularity or specular reflection. And this basically means that we have something like a mirror-like reflection where the reflect reflection appears sharp and well, mirror-like. And this is the case if we have a material with a very even surface. So it's very even. And if we now have an incoming light, which is displayed here as different light rays again, you can see that every light ray, which is bounced off the surface, kind of has the same angle um, and goes away in a parallel fashion. And this basically just means that whatever incoming light we have here, we can basically, if we would look from this kind of point of view here, we would see the exact same image as what would be here in this kind of area. So this is like a perfect mirror if we have a very super even surface. Now, the opposite is that we have a surface which is rather rough on a very microscopic level. And this means that the light rays now don't have this kind of parallel um, even distribution, but they have more like a random distribution. And this would lead to a more blurry and uneven reflection when we would have a look from over here down to our material. And of course, in the real world, it's a little bit of both. So we have a little bit of diffuse rough reflection, but sometimes also a little bit of specularity in our material. And if we have a look at some real world examples here, you can see on the left side is some microscopic uh, picture of paper. And as you can see, all those fibers on the paper basically lead to the effect that, that this is a very rough surface and the light will be distributed very randomly and very yeah, in very different directions and this basically means that this kind of material appears very diffuse to our eye on the right side you can see the almost perfect surface of uh, aluminum and as you can see this or you can actually see it in the in this kind of picture but uh, you can imagine that this is so clean and so even that we kind of get a mirror-like effect if we have some light on this kind of material. And this is actually how mirrors are made. It's just a basic super polished sheet of metal and just a glass frame in front of it. So yeah, that's like the two opposites, very rough surface, very 
even and clean surface. Now here's a small animation. As you can see that the amount of diffusion and specularity changes over time. And we control this kind of um, specularity with the roughness value. It depends a little bit on the render engine you have, but in uh, most cases or in many cases you have like the roughness value you can change in some render engines it's called specularity but it's the same thing just inverted so you basically have a slider or value where you can say should my material be zero percent rough or should it be hundred percent rough and now let's go into cinema 4d and i have a very simple scene over here just a simple sphere and i have a corona material on that kind of object and now it's very important if you want to work in the corona environment that you pick the physical material over here and not some other default material from the default cinema 4d menu so whenever you render or work in another render engine you usually have specific render engine materials you can uh, choose and pick now Let's have a quick look at one of those materials. So physical basically just means that the material behaves in the physical way. We call this workflow also PBR workflow, which stands for physically based rendering. And this just means that the material reacts to light in a physical correct way. And I think most render engines nowadays are physically based. So that's not like a unique thing anymore. But back in the days, if you had a PBR render engine, you know that the behavior would um, give you realistic results. So let's have a quick look at the basic setup. So on the left side of this material editor, you have different things you can activate and deactivate. And the first thing is your general settings. And right on the top, you have a preset option menu where you can just pick something from the presets. So you have different kind of materials you can use here. And this will give you a pretty good starting point if you want to do different kind of things. So there's class materials, there's metal materials, and also some kind of artificial materials like uh, PVC materials. And then you have below this, you have to, to choose between non-metal and metal materials. And we will cover this in a, se in a second, but for now, just um, leave this to non-metal and we yeah talk about it in a, in a second why we have to we have those two options here in this kind of general uh, menu now the most important kind of uh, menu is the base layer menu here in your editor this is where you define how the base layer of your material should look like in the top you have the color selection so we can just pick for example another color um, as you can see it just takes a second and it updates also in your viewport. Let's keep it white for now. And you don't want to go 100% white when you do white materials. You want to stay somewhere below 80% in most cases. Otherwise, it just would be too bright and too unrealistic. So keep your values a little bit below the 100% area. So and here, here it is what we're talking about in, uh, and as a second ago, it's the roughness value. And this is where we can define if our material should be no or have no roughness at all, or if it should have a lot of roughness. Let's start up the renderer here to see what this kind of, what the difference actually is. So as you can see, we have a very diffuse kind of sphere now here in our scene. And if I decrease this value and I just see this value is quite a bit high so we turn this to 1.5 um, so you can see we get this kind of glossy reflection on our material and we can see the trees the sky the street and yeah this is kind of because we have this roughness value at zero percent so if I move this back up to something in between around 50% maybe, you can see we have a little bit of both. It's not really, you cannot really see the sky anymore. It's just still too diffuse. So let's go maybe something more in this kind of direction. And as you can now see, now we can kind of make out the scene again, but it's a little bit more glossy and diffuse. 
Now you can actually throw in a texture in this kind of texture field to control this kind of roughness value, not like for the, the complete sphere, but for different areas. So you would throw in a black and white image in here and then um, your roughness would be controlled by the grayscale of your image. So let's throw in, for example, a noise shader. So we will talk about what shaders are in another session, but for now, just understand that we throw in this kind of noise here, noise pattern, and maybe let's switch the colors over here. So we make our base color very dark and our first color white. And let's increase the contrast. And now you can see we get this kind of representation on our sphere where we have areas where it's super glossy and we have areas where it's very diffuse. And this basically is in that way that white areas, if you go back here to the, to the slider, white would mean 100%. So white means it's super diffuse, super rough and black areas means 0% and this is where we have our material uh, would be appear very glossy. And this is how we can get in some irregularities, for example, in the roughness of our material. Let me clear that for now. And yeah, that's basically for now all you need to know about the roughness value and how we can control the roughness of our surface. So let's say we have a little bit of another use case. So we have, or well, we wanted to create a very rough diffuse looking surface, but we want to add a layer to it, which is glossy. And we have this kind of behavior uh, also in the real world. And this is if we have something like a clear coat layer. A clear coat layer is a very thin additional layer on top of materials. Um, it's often used, for example, on car paint. But also if we have, um, if you have something like a, a ceramic kind of object, you will have like different kind of layers. And we can simulate this with a clear coat layer where we have a rough surface, which has a diffuse reflection. But on top of this is a very, very thin translucent clear coat layer. And in Corona, we have a simple setting for this. If you go down this kind of menu here a little bit and we cover all the other things as well uh, later on in other sessions. But to jump ahead, you can see we have this clear coat layer. And if you activate this, you can see we can get kind of sharp reflections on top of our diffuse reflections. And in this kind of setting, we can also change the roughness. We can change the color of the, um, of the clear coat and we can even increase the amount of reflection of our clear coat layer. And on top you see also the amount. So this is like the basic, uh, not the intensity of the reflection, but more like the opacity of the reflection. So as you can see, if I use this value, the reflection might get be a little more intense, but this is like the main value where I can control the opacity of the reflection. We'll cover this IOR value uh, in, in a second. So let me just bring that back to 1.5. And there we go. That's like the default setting for normal materials. All right, in the next session, then we will cover what I mentioned before, this kind of non-metal metal setting.